Were they angry? Were they upset? Offended? See, I think if you share the gospel like this, you can take it to people fairly easily, fairly confidently, that they're going to enjoy you sharing the gospel with them. They're happy, they're laughing. They're not offended. They don't know they need a saviour till they know they need a saviour. Then they'll pay the cost. You need to show them the fact that they're sinless. Then we can address their sinfulness. But if you just go up to someone and say, do you want your sins forgiven without explaining anything about God or heaven or judgment or their guiltiness, then often people find that offensive. But we've never found people find it offensive. Not with people you're already in contact with, but you're wanting to go out and speak to people you've not spoken to before, the lost wandering around, as it were. It's good to have a method or something to help you do that. Did you get one of these? Is better than, do you want one of these? Do you want one of these? No, 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 no. Or guilty. Step three. If God were to judge you by the Ten Commandments, would you be innocent or guilty? And at this point, many people say, oh, I, I, would, I would be innocent. Then you say, come on, to be innocent, you have to have perfectly kept the Ten Commandments. And you've just admitted to me that you haven't. So how can you be innocent? And when they say, okay, I'll be guilty, then, you can, then that takes us to our last step, D, destiny. Would you go to heaven or hell? Because those are the only two options. Step four. Would you go to heaven or hell? And if they're being honest with you, they'll say hell. Yeah, and then you can say, does that concern you? Because it deeply concerns me, and it should. And then when they say yes, then, and really only then, can you share with them the gospel of everlasting life, and it makes sense to them. And now you've got someone stood before you who 10 minutes ago thought they were like, their life was fine and they were a good person, now realizing they're going to hell. Because now their conscience is pricked. Now their conscience is able, as it were, to show them their sinfulness. And God's able to use that in genuine repentance. Not just seeking a good friend, not just seeking heaven on the cheap, but genuinely realizing that they are wrong before God, that they're guilty and they need to be put right the need of salvation but what I'd like you to do now is to pair up with someone else or triple up with two or three of you into little groups and actually share the gospel now where it's safe I'd like you actually to get the words in your mouth as it were share to the other person and if you're the other person pretend you're a sinner okay so because you've never lied have you you've never you've never committed adultery in your mind you've never done any of that I know that because at least we can't admit to it because we're, we're Christians. But pretend you have, act that position. Um, if someone says, do you think you're a good person? You can say, yeah, I'm a, I'm a good person. Okay, so let's, let's role play this and see how we do. Oh, did you get one of these? It's a gospel tract. And then... No, I didn't. Thank you. Then you can say, well, what do you know about the gospel? Or did you have a what, Christian background what's, what's or anything? No, I, I don't have a Christian background. And then you don't really need to talk about the... What... But inside it, you've actually got... The gospel. No money. And then on the back, it's got the gospel message. These are really, really good. If you're where there's a group of teenagers or something, you show it to one and like, oh, wow, that's really cool. Can I have that? And then everyone else saying, oh, can I have one too? Can I have one? And then, you can get, then you, they're asking you to give them gospel tracts. Because that's an intellectual argument you're never going to win with someone because there's no proof of hell. There's no proof of heaven. There's, a, there's only the written word that tells us about it. I know it. But you're not going to prove it to someone. But if you can take it away from the intellectual argument and down to their heart and their conscience again. And so Being like a, a chain with ten links in it and a weight on the bottom. And you, you're hanging there by, by the standards of those ten links. If you break any one of them, you've broken the whole chain. The Bible says if you break the law in one point, you've broken all of the law. What you need to do is do what you're called to do. We're called to be witnesses. To be salt and light in the world. They're called to make their response before God.